the earlier uh, motion on Bishop Oginde, who happened to have been my bishop for many years before I defected from NPC to SDA. But unfortunately, because uh, the mover was called to respond, I was not able to speak. But I will speak, I will read uh, a chapter in the Bible which applies to this motion, but which also applies to his. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you out as a sheep among wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. I will not speak because of the rule of relevance, but I hope he remembers that. Madam Speaker, we were talking about the issue of sexual harassment of uh, employees of the TA state in Kericho, and I've spoken a bit about it. And Madam Speaker, one of the things that I want to say, that it is actually a tragedy when we are talking about Kenyans who are helpless, who do not have the advantages that we have as members of parliament or as national leaders that who are harassed and had actually challenged the committee that you had hoped that they'd come up with uh, stronger recommendations. And one of the recommendations that I'd hoped that the committee had come up with was to force the tea uh, companies to come up with very clear sexual harassment policies. The other issue, Madam Speaker, that I wanted to speak to is that as a house, we need to call a spade a spade and not a big spoon. When we talk about sexual harassment, if you look at the Sexual Offences Act, that is a very clear definition. But what I was hearing members referring to here are cases of sexual abuse, cases of rape. When you are talking about sexual harassment, we are actually cushioning acts which are very bad. And uh, Madam Speaker, I know that, uh, you know, sometimes it's very difficult. I remember there was a case that we were told one time in church that there's a lady who was told that she should, uh, if she doesn't speak, she was a poor lady and she was told if she doesn't uh, say amen, she will be given a blanket. And so this woman kept sitting down and every time uh, the pastor said something she liked, she could not say amen. But at some point, she reached a level and she just said amen anyway, blanket or no blanket. Madam Speaker, I've reached that level of blanket or no blanket, I'm going to say amen. And the amen I am going to say is this. I want to warn the men who are targeting national leaders with sex shaming, like the one we have seen of late. If we cannot protect women at the local level, and we are trying to, and us as women leaders, we are being targeted. And we want to be quiet because of one, two, three reasons. And please excuse me as women, because I know we had agreed that we will not talk about this. But blanket or no blanket, I will talk because I'm very offended. We cannot be treating women like trash. We cannot be treating women like uh, rubbish. We cannot be treating women like they are the ones who came up with sex. Like they are the ones who invented sex. And I want to tell women who are shaming and victimizing another woman who is already a victim and you are trying to victimize and taking a moral high ground. Shame on you. Shame on you. I have seen one of my friends going and saying, because you have children, uh, don't do this. Who told you that a woman posted photos of herself? You come here, post photos. Who hasn't had sex? Even I have had sex. Otherwise, why is my name Mrs. Mabona? But you cannot use, even today I've had. What is the big deal if I've had? And if you think there's a problem, if you think there's a problem, report to the nearest police or report me to God. But what I want to say is in this country, this must stop. This nonsense must stop. And the DCI must follow those. I don't, I don't even know what them to call them. I don't want to be abusive. But the DCI must follow those guys. Every time, there are so many women who have been followed. And every time you are being told, just keep quiet. Otherwise, you will not get a blanket. Blanket or not blanket, amen. I am going to say it. You are not going to harass women. I don't care, that, care whether you are in UDA. I don't care whether you are in ODM. When it is an issue of women, my party becomes a woman. When it an, it's an issue of women, my party becomes a woman. Because what is done to another woman will be done to me. And Madam Speaker, the issue of morality is a very personal issue. Whether somebody decides they want to get out of their marriage, we are all answerable to God. 
So let us not bring issues to, of somebody to, to ourselves. Let that be our own issue. But what somebody has done in her privacy, why are you bringing for us here in public? I, I'm sure even if we ask them, uh, if we were to take videos of Ichungwa yesterday, we might also see new styles that we didn't see in the other videos. <laughs> if you were to show the other men who are here doing their own things. Why are we making it a women issue like we are the one who created sex in this country? Honestly, I was so offended I could not even stay in this house yesterday, Madam Speaker. What nonsense is this? And we are going to amend our laws. We are going to amend our laws and make stricter penalties. If we have to bring, I, am a, I, I don't support the death penalty. I don't support the death penalty. I wish I was. But if I was, I would have actually Proceed said, we are bring the death. your time by another three minutes. Thank you. If I was capable, I would have actually brought the death. If I was a supporter of the death penalty, I would have actually supported the death penalty on people like that. But because I don't support the death penalty, Madam Speaker, I think we need to enhance the sentences to life for people like that. And please, if you are here, if you are here and you want to, like, you know, you want to stand here and give us your moral high ground, we all don't know what to do in your private lives. It's only God who knows what to do. And there are some of us who may be there, perhaps the ones who are quiet are the ones who are moral than the rest of us who are noisy. So please, and I want to urge you, behind that person you are harassing, behind that person there is a human being. You do not understand what that person is going through. I happen to know some of those people at a very close level. And their lives and their children's lives have been destroyed. At least if you are not bothered about that person, have mercy on their children. Unless you are the devil incarnate. Idiots. I mean, I'm sorry, I withdraw that. I withdraw that, Madam Speaker. But it's, 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 really, it's really offensive. Why would you do that? Honestly, why would you do something like that? It, we are so morally bereft, you think you are better than the person that you are sharing. The fact that you can share that before people. Even if I take the photo and it is mine. Right now, if I have sex with my husband, I take a photo. There is nothing wrong. There is no law against it. The problem is you who is sharing my photo. Because I'm very sure I'm not the one who shared those photos. So why are you sharing my photo? Even in this country, the Constitution ensures the right to privacy. So please... You men here, and also let me talk to my fellow women, you have a right to relate to whoever you want with. And you have a right to have sex. But the same verse I am giving <coughs> Honorable Bishop Ogende, let me read it for you. Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. Behold, I send you out as a sheep among wolves. I'm sending you as a sheep among wolves. Therefore be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Know that even if somebody is your colleague and they are looking at you and smiling and giving you wings and kisses, that is a wolf. So be mindful about what you do or what you say. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. Uh, the Honorable, yes, we'll give you two minutes because you're going before somebody else. That's okay. Proceed, Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. You know, Honorable Speaker, I never wanted to interrupt the Honorable Millie especially when she mentioned me and photos. 